Congratulations and welcome to this dog bite prevention education kit. This is a fabulous kit on canine communication and social behaviour. It's divided into six sections. Section one is about the Be a Tree program. Section two, learn how to greet a dog. Section three, learn to speak dog. And then section four looks at being a detective, searching for clues in how a canine's communicating. Section 5 gives some great examples and offers an opportunity for children and their family to look at different dogs and determine which dog would you pet. And then Section 6 digs a little bit deeper into some other topics on communication. So in Session 1, we're going to learn how to be a tree and we're going to teach you how to understand what fabulous tools you have to stay safe around dogs. Hello everyone, welcome to this fun workshop on dog bite safety. My name is Nikki Tudge and I'll be your dog bite safety educator for this session. Are you ready to learn about safety in dogs? Great, let's have some interactive fun. So let's practice being a tree. It's the very first thing we're going to do. Then if you're around a strange dog or a dog that's jumpy or boisterous, or you just feel a bit frightened or scared, you can be a tree. Are you ready? Now, we're all ready, so let's be a tree. Let's have everybody stand up. Take your arms and fold them around your body. These are your branches. Now, look down at your feet and watch your roots grow. Count in your head over and over until help arrives or the dog goes away. And remember, trees are very still. Trees are quiet. Trees are boring to dogs. Here's a video that shows you how to be a tree. Notice that whenever the kids are still, the dog ignores them. Even when the dog tries to play with the girl, she stays still like a tree and the dog goes away. Now, let's watch another example of how you can be a tree. So if you're out and about and you see a dog approaching you that you're cautious of, simply be a tree and the dog will show no interest in you. Benji. For the duration of today, when you see a strange dog, you're going to be a tree. So let's jump up and practice again. Fold your branches, watch your roots grow, count in your head to the highest number you know over and over again until help comes or the dog goes away. Good job. So in the future, during this presentation, when you see this strange dog, jump up and be a tree. To stay safe around dogs, you need a toolbox. Like a toy box, a toolbox is a place where you can store all of these really great dog bite safety tools. Do you know that you carry your toolbox around with you wherever you go? Do you know that your toolbox is and what tools you have to use? Can you guess? Let's look now. Your be a tree toolbox. Number one, your body. So if you see a strange dog 
or you're scared, you can be a tree. Number two, your eyes. So you can look the dog over. Number three, your mouth. So you can ask for help or ask for permission to approach the dog. Number four is your legs. So you can walk away from danger if the dog can't follow you. And number five is your rolled up hand so that the dog can sniff you. So we're going to learn all about these tools and how and when you should use each of them. So tool number one is your body. This is your first and most important tool. You can use your body to be a tree, fold your branches, watch your roots grow, count in your head to the highest number over and over until help comes or the dog goes away. And remember, trees are still, trees are quiet, trees are boring to dogs. Sometimes a strange dog might appear. What did I say you should do in this presentation when this dog appears? Be a tree. Everybody be a tree. Good job. Keep counting. Okay, the dog has gone away. Here's another way you can use your body. You can be a rock. So if a dog knocks you down or scares you while you're already playing on the ground, curl up on your tummy with your hands on the back of your neck and wait quietly for the dog to go away. Who wants to practice being a rock? Yay! You don't all have to, but if you've got room out there, let's practice being a rock. Nice job. Good job. So you can use your body to be a tree or to, yes, you got it, be a rock. Tool number two is your eyes. How are you going to use your eyes? You can use your eyes to look a dog over to see if it's safe to approach him. And in just a few minutes, I'm going to show you how to do this so you can stay safe. But we never stare into a dog's eyes because dogs don't like that. And some dogs might growl or even bite if you stare at them. So when you use your eyes, just look them over really quickly. So tool number two is your eyes. Tool number three is your mouth. So what do you do with your mouth? You ask your parents for permission to approach a dog. And if your parents are not there to ask, then you stay away because we don't talk to strangers. Even if they have a cute puppy or they have lost their puppy and are looking for him, a stranger with a dog is still a stranger. Do we talk to strangers? No, we don't talk to strangers. Now, you may be out and about with your school teacher, your, your nanny or grandma or grandpa. So if you're with them, you can ask their permission to approach a dog. But remember, we never talk to strangers. Tool number four is your legs. You can use your legs to walk away from a dangerous situation. Any dog that is telling you with his body language that he does not like what you're doing or he's explaining with his body he wants to be left alone, they're not safe to approach. And we're going to look at some of those situations and we're going to learn about dog body language in a few minutes so that when you use your eyes to quickly look over a dog, you'll know if they're safe to approach. Even your own dog may tolerate things he doesn't really like and then one day he decides not to put up with it anymore. So you always walk away from danger if the dog cannot follow you. So if the dog is in a car, behind a fence, in a crate or tied up, then you're going to use tool number four, your legs, and you're going to walk away. You're also going to walk away from a dog if they are on their bed or on furniture or sleeping, or maybe they have their favorite toy or bone. They're the situations where you will use tool number four, your legs. And with your legs, you're going to walk away when the dog cannot follow you. Tool number five is your rolled up hand. 
When you meet a dog that is safe, you've used your eyes, the dog is safe, and you've asked permission of your parents and the dog handler, and everyone says, yes, it's okay. Then you stand sideways to the dog and show him your rolled up hand. So let's have everybody stand up and just have a rolled up hand by your side. And then you let the dog sniff you. So you're going to let the dog choose if he wants to reach his nose out. So don't be sticking your, your rolled up hand into his nose. Let him come to you. If he sniffs and still seems friendly and is wagging his tail, then you can pet him. And remember, you pet a dog gently on the side of the neck. Dogs like that. Now, if he doesn't reach out to your hand and doesn't choose to sniff you, then what are we going to do? Yay, we're going to leave him alone. He's telling us he's not comfortable. So we're going to leave him alone. And if we start to pet the dog and he stiffens up a little bit or backs off, we're not going to follow. We're going to respect the fact that he doesn't want to be petted. So we're going to leave him alone. Now, a good way and a nice indication as to whether a dog enjoys being petted is when they do their happy pant. Who can do a happy pant? <laughs> Yay, let's have everybody do a happy pant. Fabulous, great happy pant. That means the dog's happy and relaxed. His face is nice and relaxed. So let's do these, let's do these tools again. What's tool number one is... Your body to be a tree. And what else can you do with your body? You can also be a rock. Tool number two is your eyes to look the dog over. And tool number three is your mouth to ask for help or ask permission to approach the dog. So what's number four? It's your legs to walk away from danger if the dog cannot follow you. And last but not least is tool number five, your rolled up hand for the dog to sniff you. Yay. Strange dog, strange dog, be a tree. Yay, good job, good job. Fold your branches, watch your roots grow. Count in your head to the highest number you know and keep going over and over until help comes or the dog goes away. And yay, the dog has now gone away. It's nice and safe. You can sit back down. Woohoo! Section two, learning how to greet a dog. We're going to look at different dogs in different situations and I want you guys to shout out how you think you should act and what tool you should use. And you might be a little unsure in the first situation, so we're going to help you. So here you go. You're out and about and you see a dog. Which tool do you use? Your eyes to look at the dog's body language. Yay, your eyes. And then you use your mouth because you're going to ask your parents or the other adult you're with for permission to approach the dog. What if you're on your own? Yes, yes, you're not going to, are you? Because that means it's a stranger and we don't approach a stranger. So always ask your parents for permission, always. And after getting permission, if your parents and the dog's handler say it's okay, then there's another way to use your mouth. You can ask the dog or ask the dog's handler if they can ask the dog to sit. And if you feel shy, you can ask your parents. This is a good test that you can use to see if the dog handler has proper control over the dog. And if you ask the dog to sit or the handler does, does and the dog doesn't sit, then you may decide you don't want to pet the dog, but if the dog sits and still looks happy, then you can go on to the next tool. So now, the dog's now sitting, so you're going to roll up your hand. And here's a few important things about greeting a dog. 
If a dog is friendly and you have asked permission, then this is how you're going to stroke them. So let's all jump up and do this again. So stand sideways to the dog. So let's pretend the dog's on the right hand side and show the dog your rolled up hand. Keep that hand nice and still. Let the dog sniff your hand and say hello. Let the dog reach out his nose to you instead of sticking your hand. So what do we not do? We don't push our hand into the dog's face. We just roll up our hand nice and gently and see if the dog wants to sniff. If the dog sniffs and it seems friendly, then we can pet the dog on the side of the neck. Okay? Now in just a minute, we're gonna talk about things that dogs don't like. But what are you going to do if you are petting a dog and it stops panting or you think it goes a little bit stiff? Yes, you're going to stop petting them and let them move away from you. OK, because we don't ever want to do anything that makes a dog feel uncomfortable. Benji, strange dog, be a tree, fold your branches. Watch your roots grow. Count in your head to the highest number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And eventually the dog will go away and somebody will come to help you. So be a tree. Now, how not to greet a dog? So have a look at this situation. Does Boo the dog look happy? No, he doesn't, does he? Does the girl look happy? She sure does. So let's have a look at how do we know that Boo's not happy? Well, his mouth closed. He has half moon eyes. This is also called whale eye. And he's got flat ears. And his paw is raised. So Boo is not happy. Now, generally, dogs don't like hugs and kisses. Repeat after me. Dogs do not like hugs and kisses. 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 It's not a good way to show them how much we love them because they don't really like hugs and kisses, okay? So we shouldn't climb on dogs. We shouldn't wrap our arms around dogs. We shouldn't really go in and kiss dogs. So repeat after me. Dogs do not like hugs and kisses. Here's another picture. This is Clipper. Does Clipper look happy? No, he doesn't look happy. Does the little boy look happy? He does. The boy's enjoying the hug, but Clipper not so much. So what are the clues? How do we know? Well, first of all, his ears are flat. And then what about his eyes? Yes, half moon eyes. This means he's really uncomfortable and wants to be left alone. He's also got his paw up. We saw that on the other dog, but we've got something new now. He's licking his lip. He's licking his lip. So this dog is not very happy. There's his raised paw. He's not a happy doggy. So dogs don't like hugs and kisses. Section three, learning to speak dog. Can you tell when your family is happy or sad or angry? Yes, of course we can. So then we can easily tell if a dog is happy or sad or grumpy. We just have to learn to read the signs. So let's first practice what human emotions look like. Let's see some funny faces. Let's all play role and act and have some fun with this. And then we'll look at some dogs' faces and we'll see if we can understand how they're feeling. So everybody, give me scared. <gasps> Yay, that was a good job. Give me scared. Look at the person next to you. Look at their face. Give me surprised. Ah. Oh. They're surprised and happy. Yay, happy. Oh, yuck. Disgusted. Yuck. Give me angry. I'm angry. 
and then give me sad. Yes, we're all sad. So now let's have a look at these faces on some dogs. You tell me how they're feeling. So, how does this dog feel? What do you think? Look at the human first. How do you think that man feels? Is he happy? No. Is the dog happy? No. Are they relaxed? No. They look angry. Would you approach this man or this dog? No. What tool would you use? Yep, you got it. You'd use your feet and you'd walk away. How does this dog feel? Look at the human. How does she feel? How do you react when you taste something you don't like? Ugh, not nice. This is a face that shows a person or dog has experienced something really unpleasant. It's disgusted. So which tool would you use if you meet a dog who shows this face? Yes, you would use your feet and you would walk away. How does this dog feel? How does the lady look? She's not happy, is she? She looks a little what? How does she look? Scared. She's a little fearful. And look at the dog. How does that dog feel? He, he feels scared. So which tool would you use? Yep, you got it. Your feet walk away. How does this dog feel? He has a nice, soft, loose face with nice, soft eyes and his tongue is hanging out. He's panting, happy panting in a nice, relaxed manner. So how does he feel? How does a man feel? Yes, they are both feeling happy. So which tool would you use? Yes, you've already used your eyes and you've looked over the dog and you've said, yes, this dog looks happy. So now you're going to use your mouth to ask permission. So you're going to ask your parents for permission to approach the dog and then the dog's owner. What else? Yay, I can see you all. Yep, you're right. Your rolled up hand. You're going to use your rolled up hand so the dog can sniff you and get to know you better. How does this dog feel? Look at the man. He's not very happy, is he? But is he angry? No, it's something else. They have their eyes down. They have a slouched body. The poor dog has his tail tucked and he's showing the whites of his eyes. They both look very, very sad. They're sad. So which tool would you use? Yes, your eyes first, look over the body, and then what else? Your feet to walk away. Yowza! How does this dog feel? How do you look when something surprises you? Which tool would you use? Yes, your eyes look over the dog and your feet to walk away. Now welcome to section four. Now we're going to become a detective. We're going to look for clues so we can very easily interpret and understand how a dog's feeling so we can then use that great toolbox we've got. So are you ready for a fun quiz? Yay, we're always game for a fun quiz. Strange dog alert! Be a tree! Yay! Good job, guys! Everybody got up really quickly. Fold your branches, watch your roots grow, and then count in your head until the dog goes away or help comes. Excellent. So, let's now practice looking for clues and deciding what tools to use. So, how would you greet Bertie? This is Bertie. 
So what clues can you find? Well, the first clue is that Bertie is chained up. The second clue is that Bertie is growling and looks angry. So which tool would you use? Eyes to look over the dog and legs to walk away. You walk away from danger when the dog cannot follow you. So Bertie's growling and barking and we never approach a dog who is chained or tethered or fastened up. It's dangerous. They feel threatened and they cannot move away if they're scared. So we just don't do it. Who can show me a snarly dog? <laughs> Yay, good snarly dog. So we walk away. We would walk away. Eyes and feet to walk away. So here's Bertie again. How would you greet Bertie now? Let's practice looking for clues. Well, Bertie's still chained up, but he's panting happily. You can see he's still chained up and he has a happy pant. He looks very friendly, but he's still fastened up and we never approach a dog who's chained or tethered or fastened up. So what tools would we use? Our eyes to look over the dog and our legs to walk away. So now let's have everyone give me a happy dog pant. <laughs> Keep going. Yay. So we all know the difference between a snarly dog and a happy pant. Would you pet this dog? This is Tilly. How would you greet Tilly? So let's look for some clues. What's Tilly doing? She's eating a meal. So what tools would you use? Your eyes to see what she's doing and she's eating a meal. So you would always walk away. We always walk away from a dog who is eating or has a bone or any other food item. So we would walk away from Tilly. Meet Bailey. How would you greet Bailey? What clues can you see on there? Well, Bailey's crouched over and has a closed mouth and his ears are down. So what tools are we going to use? Our eyes to look over Bailey and our legs to walk away. So Bailey is a very cute small dog, but he's not happy with you being near. So even if Bailey's owner or handler says you can pet him, if Bailey is crouched, let's all do a crouch. Yep, you got it. Or he crouches when you go near him, then he's telling you, please leave me alone. So eyes and legs to walk away. Meet Tiger. How would you greet Tiger? So what clues can you see there? There's one really important one. Tiger has a toy. Look at his mouth and his ears. Which tools? Eyes to look over, legs to walk away. We always walk away from a dog who has a toy or who has a snarly mouth and straight up rigid ears like Tiger does here. So here's another one, this is Max. How would you greet Max? What clues can you find? Max has a nice happy face and he's panting and his tongue is loose. He's also with his owner. So what tools are we going to use? Would you want to greet and stroke Max? Yes, he looks very friendly, doesn't he? And he's with his owner. So the first thing we're going to do is look over him and ask for permission. And then we can use our mouth again to ask if the owner could ask Max to sit. And then we're going to use our rolled up hand to let Max sniff us. So we can look him over and see his body looks nice and soft and he's got a happy face. We can ask our parents for permission and then we can ask the handler if Max can sit. If Max can sit, 
then we can present our rolled up hand for him to sniff. And if he looks happy and stays relaxed, we can pet him where? Where are we going to pet Max? On the side of the neck. We never pat dogs on the top of their head. They don't like that. I don't like being patted on the top of the head. Do you like being patted on the top of the head? Nope. On the side of the neck. We pet dogs on the side of the neck. This is Gemma. How would you greet Gemma? Let's look for some clues. What's the first clue? What is she doing with her tongue? She's licking her lips. So which tools would you use? Eyes to look over the dog. Legs to walk away. Gemma's licking her chops and she's not hungry and she hasn't just eaten. And when dogs do this, when they lick their lips, it's another way of them telling us that they feel uncomfortable. So if a dog licks their chops while you are near them, or if you're petting them and they lick their lips, then it means they've had enough and want to be left alone. So it's best to leave them alone. Here's Gidget. Gidget's got a nice red harness on. What clues can you find? What's Gidget doing? She's yawning, but she's not tired. So what tools would you use? Eyes to look her over so you can see she's yawning. And then you can say, well, Gidget's yawning and she's not tired. So when a dog yawns, that can be a sign of stress or fear. And you don't want to pet a dog that's telling you, please leave me alone. So if a dog is licking their lips or yawning, they're telling you, please leave me alone. So you use another tool and that tool would be your legs to walk away. Good job with that. You guys did great. So now let's look at some different dogs and you can tell me which dog would you pet? This is Pete. Does Pete look like a nice dog? Would you want to pet this dog? Yay! Yeah, look at his nice, happy, panty face. His nice, soft eyes. What about this picture of Pete? Oh, wait a minute. He looks a bit different there, doesn't he? So, which of these Pete's would you want to pet? Yes, the first one. The first one. He's giving you all the clues that he's happy. And in this photograph, he's not so happy. His tail's tucked. You can see his white, the whites of his eyes. His ears are down and his mouth is closed. There's Pete the happy dog. Ears forward, big soft eyes, wide open mouth, relaxed body. And here's Pete the distracted dog. His ears are back. You can see his white eyes, his whale eyes, his head's looking away, his body's tense, and his tail's down. Ready for the next? This is Joey. Does Joey look like a nice dog? Who would want to pet this dog? Put your hand up if you would pet that dog. What about this version of Joey? Would you rather pet the first Joey or the second Joey? You guys are getting really good at this. So here's Joey the happy dog. Head tilt, ears forward and soft, soft eyes, mouth slightly open and a relaxed tail. So yes, that's a happy dog. And then here's Joey the fearful dog. Her ears are out and back, whale eye, mouth is closed. Braced front legs and the body's a little bit back. That's a fearful Joey. Oh, be a tree. Fold your branches, watch your roots grow. Count over and over and over. Yay, good job. The strange dog's gone, it's safe. Thank you for that. You guys did brilliantly. So, 
little bit more. Let's look at these dogs one last time. Here is a doggy that is on the left. They have a nice play bow. They're nice and happy versus on the right, they're alert. Which dog would you ask for permission to pet? Yes, the dog on the left. Here's the same dog. One of these is a dog showing fear and one is relaxed. Which is which? Yay! The dog on the left is obviously showing fear. Paw lift. Lips are back and closed. Ears are back and down. Look at the dog on the right. Nice and relaxed. Tails wagging gently. Nice relaxed mouth and soft squinty eyes. Here's Joey again. Curious versus caution. So curious is nice and relaxed. Caution is Please leave me alone. And this is Pete. Smiling versus warning. Wow! Look at all the great things you've learned today. You've learned how to be safe around dogs, how to be a tree, how to use your body to be a tree or be a rock. You've learned about those great tools you have to stay safe and they're tools that you have all the time. You've learned how to greet dogs. You've learned when not to greet dogs and you've been a great detective. You can now look at all those really cool clues to decide when you can ask permission to pet a dog and when you should use other tools and walk away safely. And you've learned how to speak dog. How cool you can speak dog. So congratulations. Thank you for attending this dog bite safety session. I hope you've had as much fun as I have. And you're gonna get this really nice certificate of attendance to show that you've done some hard work and an appreciation of all the achievements that you've made today in learning how to speak dog. Thank you.